Hi everyone, welcome to my talk on the influence of virtual stressor representations from the ICU context on perceived stress levels. My name is Sebastian Weiss and I am happy to present this work also on behalf of my co-author. Before we begin, I would like you to let the next slide make an impression on you. As I'm sure you can imagine by now, a working day on the ICU is highly stressful. Nurses are exposed to stress stemming from workspace problems such as alarms, long working hours and high levels of responsibility or being involved in morally distressing situations. This results in health problems, burnouts, a burden on colleagues and, not to forget, a risk for patients. Additionally, due to changes in demographics, there is an increasing demand on nursing staff. Because of these and other reasons, Stress should be prevented as early as during education with a three-year apprenticeship program for aspiring nurses. Before we dive in, let's quickly come to an understanding about what stress and stressors are. Stress is defined as the non-specific response of a system to an external condition that requires a change in the system in order for it to adapt. This adaptation is called the stress reaction. The change in the environment requiring an adaptation is what we call a stressor. Further. We have to clarify that stress is a complex construct consisting of several components and is also very subjective and affected by several factors. Stress is measurable in different ways, but generally we divide these measures into objective measures that measure involuntary changes in body functions and subjective measures that use self-assessment of the subject. We already know that stress induction training can improve the stress coping skills and we also know that immersive VR is capable of stress inoculation. What we don't know is how this applies to a virtual ICU. So our goal is to create a stressful VR-based ICU environment to facilitate stress induction. In order to do this, we followed the human-centered design process and designed and implemented this virtual ICU environment based on shadowing sessions in a local hospital and in cooperation with teaching staff from an educational facility for nurses. This includes two tasks, which were used to complement the environment and create not only a cognitive baseload, but also a high immersion, as well as certain stressors. I will now proceed and explain the important parts that have been made use of in our study. Here, we see an overview from the top perspective, with a number signifying specific devices, tasks or locations within the virtual environment. First. We have a patient monitor located in the upper left corner above the patient bed, showing the heart rate, blood pressure and other vitals. The task for participants was to move towards the monitor until items were legible, remember the blood pressure and then select a corresponding pair of values in the task monitor located at number 4. Secondly, for another task, participants needed to draw medication into a syringe and then place the syringe into an infusion pump located left to the patient bed below the patient monitoring device. The first stressor in the study was an interruption, an alarm sounded by a second monitoring device by the bed's foot end. This alarm would ring at certain moments during task completion, but these moments were not known to the users beforehand. The alarm would also be signified by an exclamation mark on top of the device. Lastly, we have the task monitor at number 4, where participants would not only select the solution for the vital signs task, but also mark the second task as complete, as well as see the current overall time and leftover time if they were asked to finish the task within the time limit, which constituted the second stressor. The choice of virtual stressors, of which we wanted to measure the effect of, is based on a literature research. After clustering the results from 21 publications, it became obvious that high job demands was one of the most cited reasons for nurses to be stressed. From this cluster, we selected task interruption and time pressure during a focus group with six experts. The reason why these stresses were selected are their ubiquity and the negative effect they have on both nurses and the patients. The study was conducted on premises in our VR lab with 26 participants, 18 of which had a medical background of some sort. We used the between subjects design for the two stressor conditions. 
After participants learned how to move and interact in VR, we collected objective and subjective data at baseline, and subsequently before and during phases, where participants worked on typical nursing tasks without stress, as well as a phase in which stresses were affecting the participants. In between phases, we collect subjective stress levels using questionnaires. After the VR phases, participants were handed postdoc questionnaires and we concluded the experiment with a semi-structured interview. To measure the change in participant stress level, we recorded heart rate, breathing frequency and breathing depth over the course of the experiment with an integrated chest-worn device. Subjective measures were collected by self-estimations using the short form of the perceived stress questionnaire as well as a question that was to be answered on a Likert scale in between experiment phases. Other measures included the amount of errors participants made during test execution as well as the required time, the cognitive load by means of the NASA TLX and the presence questionnaire IPQ. The interview included questions on demographics as well as professional and VR experience. Calculating mean percentage changes for the measures between phases lets us compare the effect of the stressors on the participants. This chart shows a significant increase in heartbeat and breathing frequency from the baseline to the no stress phase. The stresses did not have a significant effect on the objective measures, probably due to a ceiling effect. However, the self-assessment shows a clear, even stronger increase in stress level when comparing the measures from the phase without versus the phase with stressors. The results of the NASA TLX show a higher mental demand for the interruption stressor because participants had to refocus to the task at hand after the interruption. On the other hand, participants were more content with their performance, probably due to being able to finish their tasks. This also explains the lower frustration when compared to the time pressure stressor. Furthermore, both tasks placed low physical as well as temporal demand on participants, resulting in a low overall workload. With respect to presence, we see high results on all subscales of the IPQ. We believe that the strong involvement of our target group led to the highly immersive qualities of the environment. The stressor did not have a significant influence on the presence. However, participants made comments on the tidiness of the ICU, stating that an actual ICU contains more devices and is a little more chaotic. The findings from the study show a significantly higher error rate in an interruption condition, which is in line with the literature on that topic. The results do not show any significant difference in stress level between two stressors, which allows researchers to choose and mix them as needed. The change in the subjective stress item always yields statistically significant results, while the objective measures only changes between the first two phases. This may be attributed to a ceiling effect stemming from the added physical movement. Concluding, we can safely state that even though VR experience seems to have an impact on the stress reaction, the presented VR ICU is a promising tool for stress induction and simulation training in the nursing profession, and we will continue to develop the system, adding more stressors and running comparison studies with the current status quo in education. Thank you for your attention, and if you're interested in the paper or you want to get in touch with me about the topic, you can find links and an email address on the slide.